Hi, welcome back. This is Tabletop Templar, and today we're uh, we're going to be finishing up uh, the the introductory scenario for the Italian campaign of 1796. And uh, so the first um, sequence is going to be I'll show you the show you this again, and then I'm going to kind of move through this a little bit quicker. Uh, so now that you know how to play the game, I'm going to try to move this uh, a little bit faster so we can try to complete this scenario. And so we're going to start with the attrition phase of the French player segment. So I moved the turn marker. It is now in June of 1796. And we're going to do attrition phase. So the attrition phase, uh, I guess I'll show how to do attrition. So here's the attrition table. And remember in the errata, the errata, uh, these two are going to be swapped. Not these, not their, these tables are correct, it's just the, the 11 to 15 should be here, 16 to 20 should be there. So, but the otherwise, it, it, that's correct. So we're going to start off with, um, and you do get um, minus one on the die roll. You roll one die for attrition. Uh and two dice for combat, so I'll just keep that in mind. One die for attrition. You get minus one if the stack is all French and French satellite units, and an additional minus one if all units are in the home country. So I check, I check supply, everyone is supplied. So everyone's in supply. So we'll do Messena's force. Messena is here. These are your leaders underneath. Leaders don't count towards attrition. And Messena has a force of four, five, he has six. So we're gonna, and he's gonna be rolling minus one because they're all French, and my, an additional minus one because they're all in their home country. Technically, this is part of France still, or it's part of France. So he's gonna be minus two. So his force is, uh, is just over that five, so it's going to be, you know, even though it's minus two, there's going to be a chance they might lose something. So, minus two on the die roll. The die roll is is a one, so that's nothing. Bonaparte's. He's got an eight, and he is in Genoa. Uh, Gen he's supplied. Genoa is part of France. So, minus two, and he rolled a two, so he is, uh, he's good for attrition. And then we've got Kellerman. Kellerman is a four, so minus two, so you can see here, he's in the three to five. He has four strength points, but if you subtract two, the highest you can roll is a four would be zero. So we're not even gonna roll for Kellerman. So that's gonna be it for the attrition for uh, the French. And so we'll move right on to uh, reinforcement phase. So they're gonna get, they have they only lost one guy last turn. They're gonna get a unit in Leon. And so that's all they get for they have no reinforcements this phase. They will get uh, yeah in July they're gonna get a a general and another infantry at Leon, and then every turn as a replacement they'll get an infantry at Leon. So this isn't July. This is June. So and the Austrians. Won't get anything till July either. Yeah, July, the Austrians are going to get a decent sized force, so uh, the French uh, maybe need to make a move here. So they've captured Toulon, they've got Genoa, Kellerman is threaten, threatening Turin from the north, Bonaparte is in, uh, in Genoa. And so they need to go on the offensive here. They need to attack. So I'm thinking Kellerman's going to move here. 
He's going to attack Milan. Bonaparte. I'm thinking he's got... He's got eight. He's going to have to leave a guy behind. So I'm going to make change real quick. These are generic strength points. He's going to leave a force in Genoa. And they're going to, Bonaparte is going to Let's see, Mantua. What do we got? Leader E. He's going to go one, two. This is two movement points, and then three. It's going to be a river battle. It'd be a tricky one, but I think he's got to. got to move. Bonaparte moves there, and Messina. Is going to move his this stack of these leaders here. Actually, we're going to move. We're going to get leader H out of here. He's going to go back to Leon. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's going to pick up him. Uh, he'll stay there. He'll stay there and and hang out. He'll pick up some guys on the way back. So yeah, Messena. Probably should have had him go back before. It's all right. Messena. He's gonna go right here. He's gonna take on this force. He's got five infantry, one cavalry against yeah against that. Well, that'll be a tough fight, but you could probably cut him off, besiege him, maybe force a battle. I think Messina will do that for Turin. Um, yeah, I think that's it for the French. Uh, let's do, Kellerman. He's got three infantry, one cavalry. He's going to be fighting, uh, one infantry, uh, the um, Austrians, I guess, will go into, well, they won't fight the field battle. They'll retreat. Kellerman can either uh, besiege or, or do an assault. So if they do an assault, the Austrians would be doubled. They'd be two strength. And... It, so it'd be four against two. It'd be two, two to one battle. Is there a river that runs? No. It'd be just a standard battle. Yeah, let's do that. That seems to be a good, a good fight. Two to one. Kellerman's gonna add. So they're gonna add two to this die. One for the. Difference in morale. French have two morale. Austrians have one. Uh, so that's one plus one for Kellerman. So they're going to be adding two to this. That's two to one odds. Yeah, why not? Here we got a four and a three. Seven plus two is a nine. At two to one odds, and that's going to be over here. We got a nine, 
and that's going to be larger force lose one, smaller force uh, d2. So um, they're going to be destroyed. So we're going to go over to the combat loss chart, and this total strength is two. So they're going to lose one. The French will lose one. Um, and the Austrians will be destroyed. Pretty simple battle. We'll take that any day. And Milan. Kellerman takes Milan. And that's the next objective. So now France, they have Genoa. They have Milan, they have Toulon, and they just need Turin and one other city to win. And this army is now trapped at Turin. I think Messina might want to cut them off, besiege them, force a fight. Kellerman could possibly reinforce Messina. And then, of course, there's, there's reinforcements coming uh, from Lyon. So I, I think that the French might want to do a siege here. So, what would the Austrians want to do? They've got a big force here. They've got five infantry, two cavalry. They just don't. They don't want it to sit. Get. They're going to be fighting. Four, five, infantry, one cavalry. So Masenda's force is slightly smaller. Uh, yeah, so the, the French will attack, and it will be a siege. They're going to, well, they're going to attack, and, well, what, would, what do they want to do? Do they want to fight a field battle? Or should they, I feel like they, they, they're not going to want to sit. Uh, this is a t it's said in the scenario that they, they didn't want to have any decisions but maybe I'm overthinking this let's let's do the battle I don't think they would want to sit and have a siege because this is a this is the largest Austrian force and I think they really need to to fight this one out they can always retreat back into the fortress I think just sitting in in allowing itself to be besieged isn't really helpful and they have a chance to potentially uh, turn this around so they're gonna fight the field battle here and yeah they're gonna get hmm this might be a. Uh, this will be kind of um, fairly balanced, because this is a pretty uh, defensible city. It's a field battle. It's going to be in the mountains, so it's going to be a minus two, but then Messina will negate that, and so it's. Well, is it a field battle? Or is it... Okay, so we have to decide first. Sorry about this. Uh, I have to... This is the bad thing about playing solo. You, you have to... Sometimes you get mixed up which, which decision you're on which. So let's start with the first thing. The French are attacking. Okay. So now the Austrians decide. Are they going to sit back and allow them to be... Bes go, are they going to go inside the city or fight a field battle? They go inside the city, they could be cut off and besieged. They don't want to do that because there's a lot, there's not a good chance of being relieved. So they're going to fight the field battle. Okay, so there's no city assault. They're going to fight the field battle and it's going to be in the Hex, which is going to be uh, a, a mountain. Uh, there is a river here, but there's a bridge, so it doesn't count. Well, wait, no, actually, no, that is a, 
Let me check. Let me check the bridge. Okay, so Messena is going to attack. We're going to do a field battle here outside of Turin. So because of the river, I don't know if you could see, I'm going to move this out of the way, it is on the Turin hex side. So the, the bridges do not have anything to do with combat. But this river is on the side of Turin, so that it's not going to count as a penalty for Messena. It is going to be a bonus for the Austrians inside. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, we're going to subtract two from that. So it's going to negate Messena's uh, bonus. So right now we're even, but then the French have a, a morale difference of one. So we're going to add a total of one for this. So here's the Battle of Turin. Uh, yeah, let's just let's see how this goes. Ooh, this is a five, six, uh, <laughs> 11 plus one is 12. That is a crushing victory, I believe. Uh, oh, I didn't, did I do odds? I don't even do the odds yet. Oops. Four, five, six. It's six to seven. So I'm pretty sure that's one to one odds. Yeah, that's that's gonna be one to one odds. Um, so the attacking, so technically the larger force are the Austrians. So so really we're it's we're subtracting. Right? Okay. Let me double check that. So actually this is uh the larger force, um the the higher die is really in favor of the larger force. So we have one to one odds, and so we go over uh so we, I rolled at eleven, but we're we're gonna subtract it because of the French morale. The Messena's leadership is a two. The the hex defensive value is a two. So those in the gate. So we're subtracting one because the Austrians are larger, and so it's a ten. So it's going to be right here. Um, the larger force, which is Austrian Austria. Is you lose one. The smaller force, which is the French, are going to get a D1, demoralize one. So let's see what the the result. The uh, the Messina's force is a is six. So um, so six for the Austrians is going to be one. They're going to lose one. D1. Is gonna the French are gonna lose two, and gonna be demoralized. So we're gonna do battle one, and now the French are demoralized. I'll put that on there. So that's the first round of combat. So now the French, the demoralize reduces the morale. So now the morale is less. Um, so now beginning in the second, uh, round of combat, which could continue, um, you know, the Austrians are going to stick around, they're going to fight, so let's do the, let's, let's get rid of the, the French lose two, the Austrians lose one, oh, actually, come to think of it, the when you get a demoralized, you have to lose cavalry. So the French lose one cavalry and one infantry. So they're down to four men now. The Austrians lose one infantry. I'm going to make change. Just a second. I'll be back. All right, so now it's six against two. The Austrians have six. The French have, uh, or I'm sorry, six. It's not six. Four. Oh, it is six. 
six against four. So that brings the odds quite a bit different. That's, uh, yeah, now it's instead of one to one, that's going to be three to two in favor of the Austrians. And now the French have lost. Um, their, their morale is, is uh, down to a one. So when it goes to zero, then you have to retreat. So they don't have to retreat. Although they could end the combat. <laughs> they could very well end this combat. Um, yeah, I'm thinking they might do that. They're in no hurry. Uh, this was maybe a little bit premature. So we'll go ahead and... I think the French, they've got time. They don't want to lose any more troops. They're going to end this combat. So they're going to have this... The demoralized stays on, on Messina. And that'll be it for that, for that fight. So, we'll move on to Bonaparte against Leader E. Bonaparte has a pretty sizable force. He's got six infantry, one cavalry. He's going to be facing one infantry, two cavalry at Leader E. There is a river, and the river is... Well, it, it, it actually, it, the rivers go right through the heck. So really, if it crosses it, it should be, yeah, that should have been an additional, let me, let me double check that. Okay, so I actually had that wrong. The Austrians were the larger force. So, and the larger force wants to roll as high as you can. And that was one to one. So, and I should have been adding the river as well. So, Messina and the um, mountain negate each other. So, all that's left are the river, which is a two modifier in favor of the Austrians. And the French have the one morale difference modifier. So, it should have been a plus one for the Austrians on the roll. So I rolled an 11, so it should be 12, which the result for that is, for 12 is is one, which I've already taken off for the Austrians, but it's a D3. So D3 uh, would end the fight. Uh, and then going, to, and so for the Austrians had uh, they had seven. They had well, it's the smaller force. So what did the the French had four? Five, they had six. So the French had six. And so a D three. They they should have lost three. So they lo they lost two already. So they did the D1, yeah, so they'd lose an additional uh, soldier. So I've just now modified that. So that was a pretty bad uh, defeat. And instead of a D1 now, that becomes a, that's a D3. There's really no difference between D2 and D3, so I'm just going to put, well, there is a difference, but. Um, right, well, let me see if I can grab that one, see if I can find the D3. I don't know if they, if they made a D3 marker. I don't think anyone can come back from that. No, nope. just D2s. So D2 demoralized. Um, they're out of the fight. So that was a pretty bad loss. So, Messina, and then now we roll for the combat. For the casual, oh, oh, that was for Messina. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, I didn't get that. I'm, that, that was double sixes for Miss Senna. So... Okay, so now we roll a one, a die. So now he has a casualty. So now we roll um, to see how long he's going to be out. So it's we roll one, one through five, that's how many turns they're going to be out. And if they roll, if we roll a six again, then he's dead. So we're gonna roll this. If Sen is gonna be injured, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be a four. So he's gonna be out for four turns, which I believe is the rest of the game. Yeah. So Sen is essentially he's 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 done. Wow. <laughs> so okay, so that battle comes off. Well, that was that was. Pretty ridiculous. So now we've got uh, Anjuro is going to take over command of that army. So now we're going to roll for the other. I've never, I've never rolled double sixes. I don't, oh my goodness! Another double six. So this Austrian leader is going to get. I, I rolled a two. I can't believe I just rolled double sixes twice in a roll. Twice in a row. I, I can't believe it. So now he's out. For two for two turns. So he's gonna be able to come back in. But not until August. So here, I I'll pan up so way you can see. He's all the way up there. He's gonna be in August. So He's out for two turns. Wow. That's insane. I can't believe it. So I've never had that happen uh, really in a long time. Uh, it's been probably a long time since I had anyone get knocked out. So... <laughs> So both these generals uh, are essentially knocked out of that fight. That was a vicious, vicious battle. Masena is, is, is essentially severely wounded. He's not, he didn't get officially killed, but he's out for this whole campaign. That's a huge blow. The Austrians really could care less about that force. So i got to put that force on the table now. Because I don't have a, I don't have a general there. So... We've got this stack here at Turin, and Masena. He's got so now we gotta move Masena's guys off to go to Andro. So that way I don't keep them on Masena. Where is it? There we go. Okay, so those guys are placed. Wow, what a turn of events. So now it's it's going to be up to Bonaparte. Masena's out of action. But it's, Bonaparte has to carry this. Uh, and so he's going to attack Mantua. Let's see. Is, is this a smart move? we got a river. But that's it. It's just a plain hex. So Bonaparte will negate the river. So we're going to, uh, the Bonaparte's forces are 5, 6, 7 against uh, 3. So that is going to be 2 to 1 odds. So good odds. Bonaparte's leadership knock, uh, negates the river, but the French have the morale bonus. So we're going to add 1 to this die roll. And of course I didn't want to knock stuff over. This was here. Okay. There's Genoa. Okay, I think that that was how it was. We got. Okay, we got. There's the die roll. Six plus one is seven. Combat results table two to one. Uh, a seven is going to be. Larger force lose nothing, smaller force loses one. 
Okay, so it's a victory for Napoleon. The smaller force had a strength of uh, three, so it was just one. Yeah, so no, not even a D one. So no demoralization. The str the smaller forces has three, so they're just gonna lose one. So they're gonna lose an infantry. And that was the first round of combat. And they're gonna continue. Well, that that was. I guess, the the Austrians could have, went and, and did a siege for that, but they're gonna. Well, I I I guess I did that prematurely. Um. The Austrians wouldn't have. Well, will they have done a field battle, <laughs> instead of a city assault? Will they have? I don't know. So this is gonna be a tough decision here. I think I went. I threw the dice without thinking about this. I forgot to do my progression of uh, decisions. So Bonaparte attacks. The Austrians could stay in the city, or they can fight a field battle. I threw the dice as if they were doing a field battle, but. They do know the Austrian player would know that there is going to be a force coming from Innsbruck. There's some reinforcements coming. So Mantua could have been held for a siege, forced Bonaparte to try and assault it or besiege it. And with this, now this victory here, Messina's out of action. That, that might not have been a bad idea. So let's go back. I know I, I hate to take things back again, but let's go back and redo that. Let's the Austrians are gonna hang back. They're gonna they're gonna go inside the city. So now Bonaparte can they assault? They have seven, and then but the Austrians have three. Double that to six. It's a it's now. What would the odds be here? Uh, it'd be one to one. It'd just be one to one odds. Because it's not 1.5. Um, terrain is negated. It'd be a straight one to one odds. Um, the French do have a plus one. So let's. <laughs> What's the decision here? I guess I gotta make a decision. I know the rule, the scenario said this was supposed to be lack of decisions, but I seem to be trying to think of what to do. Let's do the fight, because that's what I did. I mean, we're doing this, this, the assault here. The French are just playing super aggressive, so we'll do seven to six. Um, adding plus one. So we're gonna redo that die roll. We're gonna see what we get here. Okay, that's a better die roll for the French. We got a. We got a nine plus one is ten. So hopefully you forgive me for doing the take backs, but I. I I forgot to kind of do my progression, so this it it did give the Austrians a little bit of a better chance. So we got one to one odds, uh, and we've got a ten. So a ten is larger force loses one, smaller force is a D one. Okay, so what's the we got six is the total. So uh, French lose one. Austrians lose two. Their morale goes to zero, so their entire force is destroyed. And there's no prisoners. 
So the French do loot. Bonaparte will lose one. Mantua has been taken. That comes off. They have now, they have Genoa, Milan. Do they have Milan? They do have Milan. Kellerman has Milan. Toulon and uh, Turin. Turin is the one they didn't get. Messina, get, this is the one that's going to be tough. So, thankfully it's pretty close to France and French troops. But it leaves Austria, well they don't have a leader. They don't have any kind of leader here to attack. That's the only downside is they rolled, it, it was a saving grace for the French is that it knocked out their leader, so they can't react. The the cavalry could attack on their own. They can move in. They can move independently. They could threaten uh, supply lines or attack. Um, so yeah, so we'll, uh, that's gonna be it for the French. If it had a uh, busy turn, and so we'll, we'll come back for the Austrians. One thing I didn't, uh, I totally forgot, is that the uh, the leaders can, the unnamed leaders can never be killed, and whenever a um, a casualty takes place for the um, for the leaders, they the you can get a zero, um, yeah, as, so if a named leader is temporary, temporarily or permanently removed from the map, the owning player may immediately replace him with any available unnamed leader of the same color. If all unnamed leaders of the same color are already on the map, no replacement is made. Unnamed leaders can never be killed or injured. So, um, yeah, dur the, during the reinforcement after clear, yeah, so I think that I, I should have, okay, so I've, rep I've now replaced here, with, they do have a leader here at Turin, so they can attack and break out, and there was another unnamed leader that was killed that killed quotes uh, in one of the sieges so I placed him up there at Innsbruck and the French are going to get a unnamed leader because of Messina so just wanted to uh, to fix that up so in case anyone uh, said hey wait a second you know you're supposed to replace them their leaders so now the French are going to get a leader D, so now I've got to figure out where I want him. Uh, I think I'm going to put him with Bonaparte, because he doesn't have anything. He has... Oh, he does have a zero leader. Oh, that's a one leader. I need a zero leader. There we go. Leader F. That's a zero leader. So, where do I want this one to be? Let's do... Let's do over here. I think, um, that might work. That way they can funnel troops, because now the French have some available troops, uh, forward. So, let's do that. So, okay. So that's taken care of. Now we have the Austrians. So now, what are the Austrians going to do? So this is leader C now here. And so first we're going to do attrition. And so let's roll for this at Turin. 
So he is not, they're not in the home country. He's supplied. Or are they supplied? Let me double check that. So I think I might have messed up something. One thing I just realized is this is unsupplied, which I'm going to get a supply unsupplied uh, token, but that normally, well, it would have affected the combat of the uh, of that battle. But since the total is it would have been twelve, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. And so it's really a. Uh, it's something where I messed up, but it really doesn't matter because the total would have been 12. So let me give, let me find an unsupplied token. Yeah, so this force here, it's unsupplied uh, because it cannot trace um, to a friendly city that, that's in a supply. Uh, essentially it was cut off but since the the roll would have been at 12 anyway it wouldn't have affected it because um, yeah it, it would have it would have been the maximum anyway because of the uh, so it wouldn't have affected the battle but that's something to keep in mind uh, it does affect for attrition though for the attrition roll so it's not it's it gets a minus one. So, we, I'm sorry, we get a plus one for unsupplied. So. So, there's how many units, how many troops are here? Two, four, there's, gonna be, there's six there. So, we're going to roll for the attrition. And we're going to add one. Because, uh-oh. Five plus one, that's a six. There's six total troops there. That's two units is going to lose. And the star means required cavalry loss. It means you got to lose one cavalry. Uh, which it does have a cavalry. So we we'll lose one cavalry. And... Yeah, flip that over, and I'm going to make sure that that pool is, so yeah, so that's two, it loses two, that's not good, uh, so cutting it off on supply, that was the other thing, is, um, so this, is this is the max we could roll anyway, if it was besieged, that's another reason why it, Maybe they could have went with the siege. It would have been an additional plus one uh, for attrition if they're under siege and being on. But it doesn't matter because they rolled the maximum. So that's going to hurt and that's going to make things a little bit easier for the French. So it takes this little bit of the sting out of that battle uh, because uh, they're cut off. Kellerman cut them off from Milan and Bonaparte took. Um, Mantua, which cut them off from from Austria, and they've lost all major cities in the Kingdom of Italy. So the uh, they're they're going to be cut off, and um, but it's a city they they need to take. So uh, the Austrians are well. I don't know what they're they're. They can't really attack. I guess they could attack, but they need to stay there. So this Austrian force is going to send... Well, let me double check. Let me see if they... Don't they get a reinforcement? Pretty sure they're supposed to get a reinforcement here. Yeah, Munich, they get another one. So, Munich gets a 
another soldier. Well, I guess we could just flip this over here for two. And that's enough. So they get a replacement. So where are they going to go? Well, they're going to take one of the leaders. Leader H is going to take go one, two. Well, what's he going to do? Where's he going to go? He can't really get very far, so he's going to go one, two, and he has to stop right here, just north of Innsbruck, and I think that's what he's going to do. The other one will stay there. So I think that's the Austrian turn. All right, I move the, uh, the turn marker. It's now July of 1796, and so the French are going to get some uh, reinforcements. Uh, so it says, according to the reinforcement, jo Jobert place with Messina. Well, messina has gone, so I don't know where he's supposed to go. And then they also, at Lyon, they get an infantry. So they'll get an infantry here. And then they're also going to get a replacement. Uh, so I'll, at Lyon, so I'll, I'll just flip them over. So there'll be two there. But uh, where, where, does, where does poor Jobert go? He's trying to find Messina. Messina's out of action. So it doesn't say what to do. So do I not get to place him? Or do I make an executive decision and place him somewhere? Um, I think I'm going to do an executive decision and place him here. So this, oh, the demoralized comes off. I'm going to place him where he, Messina, the army he was, which is here. So, uh, Angero will stay in command, I guess. He'll be under that army, because I don't know where else to put him. Does he not get to come on the board? Uh, let me know <laughs> if anyone has a, an answer for that. Um, I think it'd be kind of silly if he just doesn't come. Uh, but, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What Should he have not come on the board at all? Does it really matter? We'll see. So, so one thing I see, Venice is wide open. There's nothing defending uh, Venice. So, leader I is going to take, this is Bonaparte's force. I'm going to do make some change with uh, the troops here, but... He's going to go over and just capture Venice. Yeah, Leader I. Got one, two, three. So they, they can just cap. He's going to capture Venice. So one movement point for the planes. And it's a, it's a planes again, and you pay one additional one for the cross the river. There's no bridge, so but that's three. That's just enough. So there's Venice. So now all the French need is is Turin. Is that satisfied? They have Genoa, Milan, Toulon, and now they have Venice, which is one of the other cities they can get. Well, actually, they have Mantua. Oh, they don't even need Venice. Let me see. Genoa. Yeah, they don't even need that. My bad. I don't, they're not even going to do that. <laughs> they're, they're so... There's so... Uh, so many options. They could just take Venice. They don't need it. My bad. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Because Mantua is that third one. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually easier than I thought. <laughs> So they just need to take Turin and the, the French win. So let's see what, if we, what we can do here. Let's take Leader H. He's going to take three infantry. One, two, three. He's moving here. Let's see if we can force one final battle. 
Bonaparte, what can he do? Can he come over here and take some troops? Take the cavalry. He's got a cavalry. Oh, can he cross this bridge? He just yeah, he can do one, two, three. One, two, three, four. I can't get there. So what's what's the force under this? Can they can they get it this turn? Is the question as I'm trying to figure this out. No, I, I think that it's probably not a good idea to attack this turn, but Bonaparte can certainly move his troops. Um there is going to be a sizable Austrian army coming from Innsbruck, coming, uh, well, actually, it's going to be this turn. So the Austrians will get Innsbruck, Wurmser, Davidovich, Dev, oh, I can't even see the other, there's going to get some generals, four infantry, one cavalry, and then you remove... Actually, that guy gets removed. The general who uh, who was who was wounded, he's going to get removed. So they're, essentially, they're going to get some co more competent generals. Four infantry, one cavalry, coming right at Innsbruck, right here. So Bonaparte can't just sit. He he's got to. He's got four, he's got six, he's got five infantry, one cavalry here. Can he lead? This is the question. See, they could, he could send one over to Venice, which would satisfy, so even if they lost Mantua, they'd have to take both back. And so if the French take Turin, is what I'm saying, you could force the Austrians to take both these back because it satisfies that other. Or they could just concentrate his troops here at Mantua. What's the play? I'm thinking... I'm thinking, uh, see, what, what's one, two, well, they could, this, so this could be attacked. This could be attacked. I'm thinking Bonaparte needs to, does he want, should he stay there and try to fight the Austrian army that's coming? This could be a decent sized Austrian army that's going to be coming from Innsbruck. Because they're going to get another replacement as well. Let's see, where's the Austrian replacement? Well, it's going to be in Munich. Hmm. Uh, they need to take Turin. I think Bonaparte... See, one of these guys can come here. Bonaparte can come here. He can come there. So we're going to swap. Bonaparte is going to... So this army is going to come under Jobert. And Bonaparte is going to take... Andro's army. This cavalry, one, two, th one, two, three, four. Well, yeah, that cavalry could get there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that cavalry is coming along. Going to Turin. That should leave. 
that should leave enough troops there. So Bonaparte, okay, leader H. Did I move them already? Were they moved? <laughs> I can't remember if I moved them already. Well, Kellerman has two infantry, one cavalry. He is going to give his troops here to Bonaparte. He's going to join Bonaparte's army and take Turin. Well, this is the game here. So what are they even do? What are we even doing? This is the, this is the game. If they win this, they satisfy everything else. So, and then this army will be there to. That's four, five, six, seven against. Three, four. Yeah, and they're gonna be halved. Yeah, this is gonna be the game here. I don't know what what I was saying. <laughs> what do I what was I thinking? And think if they need another round, they're gonna have. Uh, I'm pretty sure I moved them. All right, this is gonna be the final battle, uh, or most likely gonna be the final battle. At least if the the French win, uh, it's gonna be the Battle of Turin. If Bonaparte uh, captures Turin, they satisfy all of the scenario requirements and the French player will win so uh, this is so here's what's going to happen so the French or Bonaparte has, is going to be attacking right here attacking Turin he currently has four infantry and two strength points of cavalry total of six leaders C in Turin the Austrians have three infantry and one cavalry. So Bonaparte's attacking, the Austrians could either do a field battle or go inside the city. So if they go inside the city, they can be besieged. Um, and I, the Austrians are unsupplied. They're gonna suffer attrition rolls. And yeah, just looking at the attrition table, they've got They've got four units. So, uh, they have four. So, there's a chance they, they're going to be um, adding one to the die. So, it would be a five or a six to lose a unit. Um, you know, I mean, it's a chance, but they could potentially get attrition down. Uh, there's only a couple turns left, but um, but here's the other issue: is if they go inside the city in the city assault, normally their units are their strength value is doubled when determining the odds. However, um, they're unsupplied, so it's halved, so it negates the the city assault. So that's so that so it's basically going to be a straight up fight. Um, anyway and they know that so they're not going to risk getting besieged they're just going to fight the field battle um and so it's going to be the odds are going to be it's going to be six strength points against four it's going to be three to two odds um bonaparte's leadership rating is two i don't know if you can see but there's going to be there is a river here the bridges only count um, for movement. So the, the crossing the bridge, this is the same fight as Messena did. Crossing the river, plus this is a mountain hex. So it's another mi uh, minus two. So it's minus four, but then Bonaparte is a two against the zero rated. So it's going to be a total of minus two to the die roll, three to two odds. 
So this is going to be the battle. This uh, Bonaparte wins this. And there is troops here. There is three strength points here. And uh, where is this? To the north here. That can be, um, after one round of combat, that army can can try to uh, act, um, bring those strength points into the battle, increasing the French odds. So that might be really key. So this is going to come down to it right here. So first roll. Oh, that's not a good roll. That's terrible. Minus two. Four, four minus two is two. So we're going to... So we're on three to two odds. A die roll of two. Larger force, D2, demoralize 2. Oh, that's horrible. Smaller suffers a 1. So, that's terrible for the French. So, it was 4 combat losses. The Austrians were 4. So, it's going to be the French suffer a minus 2, or suffer 2 strength point loss, and are demoralized 2. Austrians take one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That was not what the French wanted. They lose two and now suffer a D2. So their morale drops. So here's the thing. Uh, Bonaparte just suffered a D2 demoralization. So the French have a morale of 2. So currently they're at 0. However, before the end of combat, round of combat, they can t attempt to uh, get reinforcements. And so the rule says that if prior to the end of the combat round, a demoralized force, if a demoralized force is reinforced by an equal or greater number of undemoralized friendly strength points. Uh, the demoralization marker is removed and the, and the force regains its normal morale value. These reinforcements may originate from more than one hex. So that's potentially key because there is... So the, currently they're at four strength points in Bonaparte. There is one strength point here in Milan under Angero and there are three strength points here exactly four so the, the French are gonna have to get both of these forces committed to this fight to keep it going and get to get rid of this demoralization so uh, the so they need a five or a six a five or better for both of them Andro is going to add one to his dice. So let's do this one. This is going to be the big one here. This one needs a five or a six in order to reinforce. Oh, four. Um, so we're not even going to bother with this one because that's holding Milan and they need that there. So a four. That That's not going to be good enough. So they did not reinforce. And... Um, well, actually, you know what? I just realized. So, the Austrian force actually should have been at half strength. So, at two... So, let me let me just check and calculate something. Uh, yes, I did make... I made another mistake. So, I forgot that this is a field battle and not a city assault. So, the Austrians were halved because they are um, unsupplied. So I rolled a, a 2, and so the French only got a D1 demoralized. So that is, that, that is huge because the battle is going to keep going. So D1 is only going to be one loss. So the French only lose one. They lose one cavalry. Because when you get a demoralized, it has to be a cavalry. 
So that was really a one to one. And instead of D2, it's really D1. So the French are still in the fight. Okay, that, <laughs> that, sorry about that, but that, that makes a huge difference and I completely forgot about that. I was calculating the odds as if the, the Austrians had four strength points. Well, they don't because they're halved. They really were at two, so that was two to one odds. And so that's why uh, that went that way. So, um, yeah, so that's a huge difference now. So here's the question. So I already rolled for the reinforcement for leader H. So should he try to reinforce from Milan? You would lose that strength point. Um, it might be worth it because currently we're at five to... It's still two to one odds, so they don't really need it. So I'm saying we'll hold off on that one. It, they really want to get this one because that one, they want to keep that force there in Milan. So let's. This is the second round of combat. The Austrians are going to um, stay and fight. They're not going to retreat into the city yet. Here's the second round. Minus two. Okay, six minus two is four. And we're on two to one odds still. We've got four. That is larger force and smaller force. They both one to one, no demoralization. So, one to one. So now it's the third combat. Third round. Oh, one thing. I, oh, I forgot to. Oh, one second. Yeah, so I for, I did I miscalculated that. So, okay, so here's the total. I uh, apologize for that again. Um, so the river, crossing the river makes the roll minus two. The mountain hex makes it another minus two, minus four originally. Bonaparte knocks it down by two, so we're at minus two. But the French originally had a morale uh, difference of one. So really the total roll, for the first roll, should have been just minus one. So I think I I think really they shouldn't have had this demoralization because if the two going for the two um, it really should have been a three that original die. So they really the larger force should have lost only one, no demoralization. The smaller force should have lost only should have lost nothing. So let me let me go back and try to fix that. I'll give Austria back one, and then the demoralization comes off, so they didn't lose it, but they did lose that one. So, so I think they were good now. So now we're still okay. We're now we're subtracting just one from the die roll. So let's calculate the odds here. Oh, let's let's try to get this one, this army. One one nope. Move that back. So not reinforced. So currently the French have two, four, four to three. Well, three, it's half though. So it's still two to one odds. So, but we're only subtracting one. <laughs> Got to keep all these modifiers straight so sorry about that again but hopefully you're enjoying it I'm enjoying it I'm, I'm it's been a while since I played this and I never played this scenario all right third round of combat you gotta roll high they're rolling super low so just minus one. Oh, double six 
This one's over here. Yeah, um, minus one. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. That's 11. Two to one odds. 10 plus. Larger force lose one. Smaller force demoralized. Uh, the smaller forces three strength points. And, well, there's just going to be one for everyone. Everyone's going to lose one. Yeah, larger force loses one. One infantry. And the Austrians lose their cavalry. They only lose one, though. They suffer a D3, so they're instantly demoralized. Um, and I think that's going to do it for them. They're going to have to retreat inside the city. Yep. So, according to the rules, uh, any force which which are all with which withdraws, excuse me, from a field battle, which it was a field battle, automatically loses one strength point of any type if the opposing force possesses more cavalry strength points than the force which is withdrawing. So, the French have one cavalry to now the Austrians zero, so the Austrians lose a strength point. And if a withdrawing force is unsupplied, which they are, the opposing player determines where it may retreat. He may not retreat the force into a hex, into his units occupy if any other hex is available. The enemy force must retreat one hex in any direction. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it because they're demoralized. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, the Austrians are unsupplied, so the French are going to have them go right here. They're going to retreat there. Bonaparte will enter Turin. And... That satisfies all the uh, the battle comes up. That's it. I think that's gonna be the end of the this game. So I just want to double check, make sure. Yeah, the uh, victory conditions for the introductory scenario are France. France autom wins automatically if it controls Genoa. Milan, which is right here, Toulon, which is here, Turin, which it just took, and one of the other cities of Mantua, Innsbruck, or Venice. Well, there's Mantua right there. So they have automatic, they've got all of them. They automatically win. And it's not September, so... Bonaparte just took Turin, and that's it. They, France automatically wins. So, um, so that's it. That was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, you, all of you enjoyed it. Uh, apologize again for any of my mistakes that I made. Uh, it's been it's been a while since I played, and um, that's the thing about playing a lot of different war games is that. There's a lot of these peculiar, um, particulars, you know, how certain games treat uh, combat and, and the modifiers. So I kind of forgot about them. Thankfully, I remembered them so I don't have to go back and and have someone say, oh, no, you, you messed up. At least I uh, figured them out uh, and acknowledged them. So that way, hopefully, you, you can learn how to play. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and, and hopefully you went on to enjoy this. Uh, this is the introductory scenario. It's very quick. I know that probably I was taking a lot longer. Uh, I think if you played it, you know, either by yourself or with someone else, it would probably go a lot quicker. Um, you know, the rule, the aids that it comes with actually work really well. 
um, especially if you're playing in the scenarios. The I use the leaderboard quite a bit, and uh, so you don't get to see a lot of the troops on table, but just know I was kind of making change off camera, um, you know, and keeping track of the, the pool of, of dead and what well, each army. So I, I think um, once you play through it, you could probably switch sides, play again with someone else, and you know, you'd have a lot of fun doing this. And I definitely want to try the advanced version of this, which adds a new faction of uh, Piedmont, uh, which is historically Sardinia and Piedmont, which would have, which really, it would have been that Turin. Turin was the capital of Sardinia, Piedmont. So that would have been the, uh, in an event scenario, that's going to be the Piedmont forces. Um, but here it's simulated as if the, it was really Austrian. So this, you know, it's easier if it's just one faction. So, all right. Um, hopefully you went on to enjoy this. If you did, uh, hit the like button. And uh, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. And uh, catch you next time.